Hi, I'm Kyle Cease, and I am so unbelievably excited about the video you're about to see. We have a membership site called the Absolutely Everything Pass, and one of the many segments we have on it is a segment called Hot Seat, where basically members have an opportunity to spontaneously do a one-on-one -on -one with me in front of the rest of the group. And let me tell you something, every hot seat becomes just this slew of new possibilities and revelations. You never know what's going to happen on a hot seat, but when you're done, you just go, I'm so happy that I saw that. And we are aiming for 100. I kind of think that I'm going to do more than that. But right now we're at 41 and I want to show you number 40. All of them are amazing. And number 40 was so amazing that I just felt like sharing it with you. You're gonna hear from Bahar, a woman who has what a lot of empaths have, which is this thing where when other people are in the room, I feel like I lose myself. It could be a friend, it could be a parent, it could even be your child, where you lose yourself and you have to be something for someone else. And you would think that this hot seat's just about looking at that and healing it, but it opens the door to so many revelations that we didn't know that we needed to know and this hot seat is magical. I wanted to share it with you because I promise you, as you watch this, you will get so much out of it for yourself. It doesn't matter how much you have in common with this woman because you're going to find so many revelations for yourself that'll just help you with the rest of your life. Enjoy this hot seat. And just so you know, if you wanna join us on a future hot seat, watch other hot seats, watch all our past hot seats, or even potentially be in the hot seat yourself, you can join us on the Absolutely Everything Pass. You know what? I'm gonna bring back our annual offer of $2.99. Usually the Absolutely Everything Pass for a year is $7.95, but right now you can get it for $2.99 if you type in water. And if you're on the fence about joining, why don't you just watch this one hot seat out of the hundreds of hot seats that are coming up and see if this hot seat changes something in you, gives you revelations, changes direction in your life, frees you of something you didn't know was there. Watch it right now for free here on YouTube and see if your life changes just from this one. Enjoy. What a great question this is, by the way, just looking at it. I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but I just started reading it and I love it. Please show me how to surrender. Oh, I want to know how to surrender. I don't know where this call will be headed, but I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, if the title for this ends up being, please show me how to surrender. What a deep, great question. Please show me how to, I don't know how to surrender. All right. The next thing says, I don't know how to fall in love with life and my daughter. Um, I just want to surrender and give up control, but I don't know how I love my child beyond, but I learned that love equals pleasing. Wow. You're aware, Bahar, you already can see a pattern here. You see that love equals pleasing. So we're going to find what it really is in this call. I think it says the pleaser in me instantly wants to please her to avoid conflict and get some connection. I get this Bahar. This is what I'm healing. This is what I'm talking about right now. This is what my growth is, right? I'm with you in this. We're trying to just please because we don't want conflict. But if you could get to the other side of, if you could get to conflict is okay if it's needed, right? I'm not saying we're aiming for conflict, but you still might need to, in some cases, create a boundary and some places say no, but the fear of conflict makes you just constantly get in there and go, I'm going to make it work and I'm going to figure this out. And then you're in the same boat as the beginning, right? My pleaser in me wants to please her to avoid conflict and get some connection. The rebel in me wants to escape control and free from a painful emptiness inside. Ooh, those are the two ego choices, right? I surrender to all the feelings come up. Try to give up the pleaser and the rebel. Bahar, you are welcome to join us today. I think this is going to be a great call. Great awareness too. One of the things I think we're going to do in this call is just reflect to you how aware you are, right? In other words, you're aware, but you might not be aware that you're aware, right? So we're going to find something deeper here. I don't know how to fall in love with life and my daughter. Ooh. And this is all a pattern that's doing everything it can to not have conflict. And we're never aiming for conflict, but sometimes just to get to the next stage, feeling through conflict arises. Hello. Hi. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> it's so wonderful to meet you and you are so allowed to be nervous. 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh my God, this is happening. <laughs> I'm so, and, and is it, thank you for being here. Is it pronounced Bahar? Yes. That is oh. so cool. <laughs> what, where are you from? I'm calling from Germany. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so cool and to I'm have so you. I'm so grateful that it's at uh, 12 p.m. your time. So it's 9 p.m. my time. It's it's just perfect. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Well, I'm glad we were able to make this time work that we could have you on. Yes. Well, you have a huge heart. I can see it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try. I'm working on it. But thank you so much. Why, how about you tell me about what, what's going on? It, like, pretend I didn't read that and you just talk from your heart about what you're feeling. And I might interrupt and throw some stuff in there as you, as you tell me if that's okay. Okay, so um, first of all, sorry if my English is like, you know, uh, it's not my first language. So <laughs> I'm going so to try. You're, you're nailing it. You just, okay, thank yeah. you. So, um, uh, like I mentioned, I have a daughter, she's uh, almost five years old, and I love her crazy, like beyond. And um, it's it's hurting to even talk about that. It's just um, the second she's waking up, you know, I feel constantly like um, immediately like um, I can breathe. I am, I'm, I'm like, I feel so controlled and um, mm. And, and then we sit and we play and, you know, and I'm so playful with her. I'm playing, I'm doing everything. I'm so loving towards her, but inside there's a war. It's just a war inside me. It's like, run away, escape, run away. <laughs> and, wow. and yeah, and, and I'm not doing it. I'm just, you know, trying to calm myself down and, keep playing but I know it's not only playing it's pleasing it's like giving up myself and it's pleasing and then um, when I find the strength to you know step out of it to to have boundaries and to have a me time it doesn't feel like me time it doesn't feel like um, I own my life it's like I have to do something that justifies that I'm not pleasing in that moment and and it's like okay, go back pleasing, just don't be by your own, go back mm -hmm. pleasing, and um, what hurts so extremely is also, even when I have me time, um, and you, I know you, you're talking about this so many times, but it's like, I don't know what to do, <laughs> uh, it feels like, no matter what I'm go go going to do, it, it's still in prison. It's like I'm in this illusionary prison and I don't find the illusionary door to get out, you know? It's like, yeah. and, and it feels like so empty inside, so boring, but it's not only boring, it's like empty, like it, it hurts. Yes. And it, I feel so disconnected from life, from myself. And yeah, it's either I pleasing her or I feel empty. and. Yes. I don't have different options. Yes. So let's play with this. I, 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 I'm going to just start by telling you the energy that I see that, that maybe will help with this. So I see an energy that doesn't know who, who you would be if you are not pleasing, right? But you're imprisoned to pleasing, right? Like, like there's two yous. There's the, at least I know who I am if I'm pleasing someone. I'm there for someone else doing what they want. So I have some kind of purpose. And then you being away from that, there's no one else in the room, creates this giant emptiness, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. that emptiness is you actually seeing yourself for a minute, right? Like the pleasing to me from how you're describing it really sounds like it's, it's on top of your inner child. Like you have a pattern that is so there for people outside of you and your inner child cannot be seen because of that. The emptiness is actually a gold mine. In other words, when you feel the emptiness by yourself, I want to dare you to not run from that because emptiness actually isn't a thing. There's nothing but space that all is legitimate. Mm -hmm. Even a void is something, right? Like we, we feel emptiness as a bad thing, but it's actually a vortex. It's a big portal where what's inside can come up. And the pattern you have created is your daughter, she, what you've said shows me that your daughter is 
what you use as the blocking of your inner child, because that's the identity that you're used to. Meaning like you, I'm sure your whole life have been more aware of what your parents were thinking as the blocking of your inner child. That's a protection mechanism. So when you have people over, you're probably immediately there for them, but yeah. right. You don't, you don't have any connection to yourself. So you have this kind of choice of completely lose myself when someone's around or feel crazy pain that comes up with aloneness. Cause you, cause the people are to distract you from, from this pain. So they're kind of an addiction. Yeah. What, what are you getting as I say all that, first of all? It's absolutely, you nailed it. It's absolutely, yeah, I don't know what to add to that. And, you know, when I'm sitting with my daughter and um, I know there's, I feel the rebel inside, you know, just I get angry. I get so enraged, yeah. but I don't, and I try to suppress it. Of course, I don't want to, you know, yell right. at her. But I end up snapping here and there, you know, and um, but I try to suppress that. And then I get aware, OK, that's the rebel against the pleaser in me. And then, OK, like I want to, you know, let those feelings come up and feel them. Mm -hmm. But I get, you know, she's right next to me. She She wants to keep playing and I feel the feelings and then but she wants to play and I don't know how to surrender. Or yes. What happened well, that moment. Well, the first thing what I'd love to do, I have, I have really good news. The first thing to do is look at what the rebel's rebelling against. Your unconscious belief is that it's rebelling against her. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's, it's not. rebelling against a pattern that you have that says, if you're with someone, your inner child is buried. In mm -hmm. other words, you, there is a you available that will be born that sees your inner child while someone else is in your life too, that will counterbalance and be able to hold space for both what you feel and your daughter or, and someone who's visiting or, and a partner or, and your parents, right? See, you only know life as when they're here, I bury me. You don't know life without that, right? Yes. And the rebel is not against your daughter or the person in the house. It's against the pattern, which is a good sign, by the way, because the rebel's saying, hey, the pattern you've lived, we're now outgrowing it. Like one mm -hmm. thing you can be excited about is this is coming to light now very clearly because it's not sustainable anymore, right? You're yeah. now asking for help or you're open or you see it. It used to be just you, right? Like I just shut off when I'm with someone else, right? There's nothing else there, right? I shut me off. So I want you to know it's not rebelling against your daughter, right? It's rebelling against the fact that when you're with your daughter, you shut her off. And for breathing room, she's rebelling. She's going, but she's rebelling against you, not your daughter. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and if, you think, if you think she's rebelling against your daughter, you're going to bring a bunch of guilt in too. You're going to bring all this stuff like, I'm a bad mom, I'm not present, all these other things. But that's just because you don't have the true information. She's mm -hmm. not rebelling against your daughter. She's rebelling against the pattern itself that says, if I'm with someone, I lose myself, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we do is we undo that. I want you to just hold general space for the idea, even though you might have never seen it before, that mm -hmm. there is a you that can both exist in your heart and you can hear your inner child while simultaneously being a mother, playing with your daughter, having company over whatever. Like, can you feel two children existing? Oh, this is so hard. It's exactly like, it's not me and them. It's like me or them. I understand. Yes. Yeah. And that's a, that's a big pattern. By the way, I, I know that that often is a sign of that's a pattern that can happen when you had a narcissistic parent, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a narcissistic parent, they start to train you. There is no you and it's only them. So you start to get in your mind that it's either what mom says, or I think I, there's no room for both. They don't say, what do you want? Or what do you feel? Right. So you start to learn my feelings are irrelevant around this person. And then it starts to be my feelings are irrelevant around people. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> and so you, you have, 
you have, of course, a deep, open-hearted desire for connection, but to you, connection means you're gone. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. And then it's like, my love is not enough. Like, when I see my, when I look at my daughter, I feel love. And at the same time, I feel like I don't even want to love because love is so exhausting. It's mm -hmm. like, I want to connect, but I don't want to connect. I Yes. Like, is it, but, is it, is yeah. it love? Do you think it's love or do you think it's attachment? Attachment's it's exhausting. Yes. Yes. Definitely. So this is so important that we have the right word because I want you to hear it's not love that's exhausting. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's attachment. So if we call it love, then we're going to feel extra guilt, right? Yeah. Like, because, but that's just because we have the wrong information, right? Love is now. In fact, love is very empowering and energizing, right? Uh -huh. Love says both you and your daughter exist at the same time. Attachment says one or the other. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. Do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. I do understand. So imagine if we start the process of just even just getting the right language. Oh, my attachment is burying me. That's not love. That's attachment. That's codependency. That's all these other things. And it's rebelling against the codependency. So it says the only choices I have are be with my daughter or run away. Those aren't the only choices. Mm -hmm. And she's not yeah, rebelling. I have What's only choices. When she's next, it feels like I have only these two choices. Yes. When I'm, I, I understand all of this, but I still don't know how to surrender in that moment. Like when she is demanding and my inner child is like, it's like, I see my inner child. I'm, I'm like, okay, I see you. And my inner child is, <laughs> I know you see me, but there's still a lion, you know, yes. there's still, there. it's good. You see me. Okay. But we have to run away. And I don't yes. know how to out of that without. Well, I'll, I'll show you one way right away. Mm -hmm. I want you to change the meaning of emptiness mm -hmm. to growth. Okay. Emptiness means growth for you. What do I mean by that? When you're broken away and you feel emptiness, what's actually happening is you're hearing your inner child. And that's really painful <sighs> because uh -huh. you have learned to bury your inner child, uh -huh. right? Did you have a parent that did not want to ever hear what you were feeling? My dad was very, you know, in his own world. I mean, he's just very loving, but he's like, he doesn't see you he doesn't hear you he doesn't right. like his own world and my mom is like loving so much but she had so much problems and stress with my siblings and me and my ups and my my dad who was never there and I'm the youngest and I was like okay I have to keep this family together and I I I, I can't add more pain to this family and I have to you know be hyper aware and be hyper like watch what I do, what I say. Yeah. Yes. So imagine that your whole childhood taught you, watch what you say. There's probably, there's a, it sounds, if you don't watch what you say, what happens just out of curiosity? Like if I don't watch in my childhood, I better watch what I say. If I don't, then what? I get hit. I get shamed. I get. Mm, I'm, I'm, I disappoint them. I make them um sad and upset them make them angry and and disappoint them make them sad yeah <laughs> if we take a second and picture being a child and having the fear of making these people five times your size angry yeah that is so sad mm -hmm. right like mm -hmm. i'm scared they'll get angry i don't know how they'll respond this child just put on the planet not knowing anything about what to do is going, if I do this, they get angry. When they get angry, what happens? Do you get hit? No, I was never get hit. But never I was hit. like, my mom stopped talking. She was like so sad and so disappointed. There was this wall, like, you know, yes. my, my was like very disappointed. And I was like a betrayer for her. And my, my brother got um, angry, stuff like, I mean, they all love me. They would die for me, but they never saw me. Was... They never saw you. So imagine that, imagine this, they never saw you. So those empty moments, 
are the death of you never being seen. Do you get what I'm saying? When you're finally empty. Sorry, can you repeat that? Yes. So let's say you finally get alone with yourself. Let's say you took two weeks off and you had no phone or distraction and just were on a beach or just chilling, relaxing in nature, whatever. That would be the death to your entire childhood because you'd be finally seeing yourself, yeah. right? So everything you're familiar with, you knowing how to maneuver these parents, whatever, everything is dying when you're seeing your inner child, right? So you're keeping your childhood pattern of you're not seen alive the way that you're working with your daughter, right? The way that you're playing with your daughter is like, okay, well, at least I go back to the familiar childhood story of I'm not seen, but now you're rebelling against that too, right? Because it goes, this isn't the highest truth. So it's both going, I want the familiarity of people that never see me in my life. And I want to escape that. But then when I escape that, I actually see me, which I have no idea what that looks like. And it feels like total death. So it's just this empty feeling, but it's actually, it feels empty to a pattern that only knows don't see me. It's actually gold, right? It's, it's, it's a gold mine because you're actually seeing your inner child, right? Now don't trick yourself. And if you trick, if you see your inner child that you'd stop seeing your daughter. In other words, like you can take those times and hear your inner child and let it slowly shed the patterns that say, I'm used to not being seen. And then you'll start to have a little bit of a percentage of you seen and you'll bring that you to your daughter, but yours is a little bit here, right? Mm -hmm. And it's gonna mm -hmm. just slowly gradually open up. And one way is I want you to know those alone times might feel like death, mm -hmm but they are death to the pattern of your childhood. They're not death to you. They're birth to you. You're actually birthing who you truly are in those empty moments. Yeah. Do Does that make sense? Yes. Um, this morning, for example, I was alone <laughs> and I felt this numb. I, I, I just felt numb and I was like, just you know, turn off the TV and everything. And I, I just sat for two hours and just, did nothing, literally nothing. And it was, it felt so empty and so numb. And I just kept, just kept doing nothing, just, just mm -hmm. sitting. And I was like, okay, what is going on? What, yeah. what next? What next? And I just keep sitting, sitting, sitting. And then it came out. I, it, it was it, like, I was like crying inside of me, like disconnected. Wow. Yeah, like so much disconnect, like, I don't know how to say in English, like left out, like, you know, and and not allowed, not having the permission to, to feel what I want, to be who I am, to, I don't know, it, it was just so painful, but I cried a lot and then I felt light, like, like you know. That's because you, you literally transcended a story that you were holding on to that doesn't see you. You literally mm -hmm. said, I'm going to see me. You didn't block it with TV. You didn't block it with people. You saw you. So what mm -hmm. you cried out was some false conditioning story that you're not seeing. Now there's, mm -hmm. there's room for more, but I just want you to take that and think, a, a Kyle quote, which is what does this imply? Mm -hmm. Right? Like if you were able to just sit for two hours and then cry and then feel relief, mm -hmm. what does that imply could be coming this year? I don't know. Yeah. So obviously this could happen more. It also, here's one thing it implies. The emptiness is actually an access point, right? You, you sat in emptiness and then it left. It became mm -hmm. tears and you found yourself more. So I want you to hear that that's an example of an empty feeling, not distracted is a gold mine because it sheds some of the, I don't see myself to keep my childhood patterns going, to keep my parents happy. That just got shed. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so I want you to hear emptiness is not necessarily the bad guy. 
right? And when you saw yourself more, did you see your play with your daughter at all after that? Yeah, when she came home, um, I was more relaxed, but I quickly got back to the pattern. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't know, in that moment, should I keep playing with her? Should I say no? Should I? I don't know how to. to when you say. When you say you got back to the pattern, did you also, even though the pattern was there, did you also have a higher awareness it was there? Do you understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. I was sitting like, okay, it's it's here again, but it's yes. so, um, I don't know how to say. It's just, it catches me so much, and I can't, I can't just, I'm just watching myself. I'm, I'm again in the pattern, okay, and I don't know how to, how to, you know. Did it have a little less of a grip on you though? That, yes, that, it did. Right? So let's pretend it was gripping at 100 and now it's gripping at 80, right? Like yes, something like that, exactly. Bit, then you're progressing perfect. Mm -hmm. You're progressing perfectly. Here's, here's what our overall goal is. To get to a place where your inner child is seen just as much as a guest, a partner, a parent, or your daughter. Like at the same time. That is uh -huh. a world that's going to be birthing for you that you might have no idea of that ever happening in your past. And that's fine, but that doesn't mean it's not part of your right. You created a pat your parents created with you a pattern in your childhood that for you to have people in your life, you need to shut your feelings off. Mm -hmm. That's what's dying. And the emptiness is the slow death of a thing you think you are, but not you. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? So it feel emptiness feels like death, but it's not death. It's birth. It's the shedding of false layers of I'm not seen when someone's in my life. That emptiness is gold for you. Yeah. Right. So that's uh -huh. actually the answer to how to surrender. You're, you're going to let it do the stuff now by sitting in an available space of emptiness and you'll notice next time you're with your daughter that you cry after you cry out again, that that feeling might be there again, but it'll have a little less of a grip. It'll be like 70 or 60. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. And then eventually there's just all that is because the pattern will be gone and it'll be you, your inner child, what you want and what your daughter wants. And they both exist. Sometimes you'll still make a decision that's her preference, but your inner child's still there. Or vice versa. My inner child totally exists with my daughter, with my five-year-old wow. daughter. Yeah. Oh, like, this is what I'm craving for. It's like, yes. I just want to flow with her, just flow with life with her. It's like. Well, you're, you're heading towards it. You're in total, you're doing a great job. Like, can you feel any of the empty? Could we bring any of the emptiness up right now? Is that possible? No, not no. right now. Is, is while you're talking to me, is it burying your inner child? Do you understand what I'm saying? Is your inner child shut off because you're talking to me? No? No, she's not shut off. She's scared. Like, is he getting me right? Am I, you know, explaining the right way? Will he free me like this? You know, I, I know you free me. I know. Well, but, and you know. Well, that I want you to use, what does this imply then? You actually have an example right now of you having a conversation with someone and your inner child still being there. Mm -hmm. So it's not a fact that every person shuts your heart off. Yeah. Like, do you feel your inner child and me at the same time right now? Yeah. What a Definitely. beautiful thing, right? So we have that as a, an example, right? Now keep your inner child here for a second. I'll just show you something. Keep your inner mm -hmm. child right here. Mm -hmm. Tell me what she's feeling right now. She's, she feels seen and she feels sad. Tell her you're allowed to be sad in my body. You're allowed to be sad in my body. Feel that beautiful. It's 
sorry. No, this is perfect. Let that be there because you're actually able to feel your inner child while you're with someone. So maybe also the type of a person is a factor. Do I have someone in my life that also cares about what I feel too? Mm -hmm. Maybe, right? Now, obviously with our kids, they don't know about other people yet, right? Yeah, that's so why we, she's so triggering to me. Yeah, well, check but this out. We'll do some, so you feel that your inner child's being seen right now. You're able to be sad, right? I want you to keep her here right? Keep her here, let her feel. And I want you to just picture for a second while you feel it, that I change into your daughter. Just picture me turning into your daughter and keep your inner child here. Like I want you to let, I want you to just practice like all training wheels you into your daughter, right? Yeah. And I want you to know your daughter's allowed to see you cry mm. because she's going to learn differently than you did that her feelings yeah. matter by seeing, oh, yeah, right? So you, your parents didn't show their feelings that or they, you know, you would disappoint them and then it would become this problem to see feelings, right? But like you being able to even cry just gently, like everything's safe in front of your daughter is different than you experienced as a child, right? Like if they cried, it was a, I can't keep everything together <laughs> nightmare, right? Yeah right? So you yeah. can ch change the meaning of crying and not you, this is you breaking what your parents did with you, which is they shut off their feeling or they finally felt when they couldn't contain it anymore. So it was a nightmare, but you're now feeling in front of them, in front of your daughter perfectly. And you're going to just gently bring your inner child. And sometimes you could literally be like, your daughter wants your attention and you literally both are giving her attention while feeling without vocalizing it, you know, so she doesn't feel guilt or anything, but like, this is hard for me. And even have a moment of like, mommy's just doing the best she can and crying in front of her and, and safely crying, right? Because the pattern from your childhood is a parent crying is dangerous. You're going to show a parent crying is safe. There's different types of crying. There's yeah. the crying you know, the crying, you guys are making me crazy. Ah, and then they leave <laughs> or just the gentle release that's here. That's normal. Right. And uh -huh. so this is a safe crying. This is different. This isn't, I have to keep my mom together crying. You can literally feel frustrated and be helping your daughter and just hear yourself say, this is really hard for me to do as a mom while still doing what you have to do, but also hearing how hard it is or how much you feel unseen, right? Mm -hmm. and, and being there for the energy that feels unseen while playing with her. You're sitting there playing with dolls or, or, or playing games or, or hearing her and just also hearing yourself be like, this is hard and releasing some of the pressure, which also will eventually make it easier because you're not rebelling from your daughter. You're rebelling from your pattern and you think yeah, it's rebellion. Yes, that's what I want to ask you right now. Like, if I let those feelings come up, <laughs> like you described it right now, and then I feel the rebel, like, no, just stand up and run away. What do I do with that feeling, that yes. rebel? So we, there's a difference between hearing everything and doing what it says, right? Yes. If you're, if you're in an inner debate between maybe I should run away, then you're not actually hearing it because the rebel is actually a response to a feeling and not a feeling. So you don't even have to honor the rebel because the rebel is a response to a feeling, not a feeling. In other words, I need to rebel because I feel what? I feel controlled. Beautiful. Deep breath in. Tell the pattern this. I want you to really hear this. You're allowed to feel controlled in my body. Oh, this is, this is, this is tricky. <laughs> that means it'll be a better release, by the way. Excuse me? That means it'll be a better release, by the way. The more they're like, I can't say that, the more I'm like, yes. here comes a big one. Because right? it feels, if I allow to feel controlled, then... I am controlled. Then there is no, no they're not the same. They're not the same. We're talking about the control that exists in your body. We're not talking about someone controlling you, right? In other words, there's control that happens externally. Like if some guy 
didn't let you leave the house or something like that, something horrible like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's, I feel controlled, but you're just sitting there with your daughter. Yeah. Right. So yes. we're not saying I'm going, it's the belief people have is if you say you're allowed to feel controlled in my body, then they're just going to find the worst partner that controls them. And it's like, no, no, no. It's your resistance to feeling controlled. That's much more inviting of that type of person than if you free the, the feeling of controlled, right? So what you're offering is uh, to the energy in the body, I'm with you, even if you feel controlled, which is love. Wow. It's just, there's a war inside me right now, but it makes sense. It makes so much sense. But the rebel inside me, no, but I have to escape the control, but I get it's not, it's not, the control is not outside. Nobody's controlling me. It's right. It's the pleaser in me who doesn't want to let go, I guess. <laughs> yes. Would you take a deep breath in and say, let's see that. Let's see what happens if you say that. You're allowed to feel controlled in my body. We're talking about what it feels, not someone controlling it, right? It feels like a little child who's 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 like screaming and getting angry and like look at me like and something. How, how ironic is it that every time she tries to talk to you, you want to run away? So in other words, that's her controlling. Do you get what I'm saying? She feels controlled by your judgment of her feelings. Yeah. In other words, imagine my daughter says I feel controlled and I abandon her. Yeah. Right. So that's what you're doing to your inner child, right? She says, I feel controlled. Could you, yeah. just so I can hear, hear it and we bring it fully to light, could you say it out loud? You're allowed to feel controlled in my body. <laughs> You're allowed to feel controlled in my body. Feel that for a second. Just receive that. <sighs> Look at this. this is real mothering right now. New level of mothering. You're there for her, even if she feels totally controlled. Don't have a solution. Don't rebel. Don't run away. Don't fix. Don't cover this up. She has felt controlled her whole life. And just wants to be seen that she feels that way. You're doing so great. It's like she's desperate. It's like she's sad and mad and angry and just wants to be free and just, mm. just feel and just... just be just be mm. like just just connect in, a, in, a, in an authentic way and just be free and just feel and then and, and breathe and just you know just just get rid of this corset she's wearing mm. yeah you're doing it what is she now those are things she wants to do what does she feel <laughs> right now anger beautiful see you had solutions to what she wants to feel like she wants to feel this way but that's actually a dishonoring of what she feels now so we're already giving her solutions kind of like your parents did and covering things up with here's the solution versus you're allowed to feel anger because you were not allowed to feel anger were you no she so she feels anger yeah, so much. Yeah, so we hear her and she's allowed to feel anger here. 
right? So when, in fact, I was wondering if that was even the pattern, right? You're, she wants to be this. She wants to feel this. She wants to feel this. That's your parents talking. In other words, she's pissed right now. <laughs> and she wants to be pissed because that's what she feels. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Tell me what you're feeling right now. And my daughter is triggering this. Mm -hmm. Well, she is not. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like. It feels like sh I'm angry at her. I'm not angry at her. It's like, right. like just like an outlet. And yes. I don't allow me to be angry at my daughter. I suppress it, you know? Yes. So we see that she's not, she's, I see unconsciously she's been an outlet, but this is just, you feel anger that's in your body. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. And so we just want to, I want to make it a new world for you where it's okay to feel anger. Don't lash out. Don't use it to, you yeah. know, I, I actually think the people that become violent and scary are the ones that feel they're not allowed to feel anger, right? If you were allowed to feel anger in safe ways, feel it, whether it's going to go hit a pillow, whether it's, you know, whatever, expressing it to a therapist, whatever, making anger aloud, you're going to feel a freedom right? It's the repressing I can't that starts to make it go towards your daughter, right? But I just want you to know that we just bring to light, there is understandable, justified, does, you know, anger that's here. But it's not, it's not, I'm not angry right now, right? It's just past anger, like, like anger I felt in my childhood. It's not right. Well, yeah, because yeah, I, it's but I am angry, <laughs> you know? So what to do with that anger? But the anger is not, nothing today yes. is called anger, right? It's just like from the childhood that just wants to be seen. Well, under, under anger, by the way, is hurt. Yeah. Did you know that? She's hurt. Yeah. She's been buried her whole life, right? She just feels irrelevant. She feels, you know, unseen. And that makes me feel guilty because my parents and my, my siblings, they, I'm telling you, they would just die for me this second, you yes. know, this, but so, I don't want to die. I just want them to. So, but still, even if they would die for you this second in that scene, none of this has any blame towards them or anything. You have a belief that if you honor what your inner child feels, you're dishonoring your parents. And that's yeah. not true. They both exist. Even if you're, all of our parents did the greatest with what they had. And, mm -hmm. and even if some of them never showed up or were horrible or whatever, they were still doing the very best they could with what they had. You mm -hmm. hearing what you felt has nothing to do with what they did. Like, in other words, God sees all of it. The now goes, it's both true that they did the best that they could. It's true that they would die for you. It's true that they meant well. And you feel this. That, yeah. The, the guilt is the belief that you shouldn't feel this, right? And that's not true because it's here. That really is like, I know I use this kind of example a lot and it's stupid and petty and gross, but I want you to picture you going, I have to go to the bathroom, but my parents, <laughs> but my parents went to the bathroom the very best they could. And I'm like, they're not even related. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? You still have to go. Right. So when you're going, I have to go to the bathroom, but my parents tried to go to the bathroom the best they could. I feel guilty that I have to go. I'm going, listen, you both have body bodies that need to release things. There's, <laughs> one doesn't negate the other. In fact, that's our old conditioning. One negates the other. My way negates their way. Narcissists say my way and not their way. Empaths say their way and not my way. Damn it. Yeah. Right? That's why narcissists <laughs> yeah. and empaths end up together all the time. And, yeah. and I love how forgiving you are towards your parents. They're seen and honored, but so are you. You're just opening to a bigger capacity that says it's totally true that they did the best that they could with what they had. And I feel this. This is the new world for you. And you can still feel, even if they did the best they could, you probably have a higher awareness now than they had. So, you know, they weren't doing probably this type of work 
<laughs> right? They, you know, whatever. And you're on a higher plane of consciousness now. So it's also true that you go, even if they did the best they could, I'm angry right now. I'm, you can even say I'm angry at them. They both exist. Yeah. Right? Does, does that make, and if you have to feel through the illusion of guilt, still feel what you feel and transcend guilt. Do you understand what I mean? Like, in other words, don't use the guilt to rebury what you feel. Mm -hmm. Use the guilt to transcend it. In other words, you going, I still feel this way. I feel angry. But my parents did the best they could. That's the guilt coming in. Not related, by the way. I still feel angry. And thanks for coming up, guilt. You're going to come out with me. Guilt and anger are going to come up together. You're going to feel the guilt to transcend it, not to bury what you feel. Like, in other words, you need to feel through guilt because that's part of the release. In other words, if you feel what you felt fully, the guilt will no longer exist. Yeah. It'll leave. You will suddenly see you're honoring your inner child and your parents did the best they could. Uh -huh. But so far, the best they could included your inner child isn't seen. So even if it was the best they could, your inner child wasn't seen by your parents, which means they didn't see their inner child and just felt emotions were scary. And I would imagine being your parents <laughs> a, a long time ago in Germany. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when they come from Turkey and then they moved to Germany, but anyway, right. yeah. But in the, those areas, I, you know, I remember performing in Romania and learning how, I know they're different countries, but I, I learned when I performed in Romania how they had grown up in this kind of communist energy. And I realized I was looking at an audience that was not used to feeling their emotions. Yeah. Right. And, and that, that, that wasn't even allowed. It was dangerous to do. So it was a, it was a much bigger process for me to perform there. Right. It was three years yeah. or five years ago today or yeah. that I was there, by the way. And with Turkish people, it's like the opposite. It's like everything is hurting so much, you know, <laughs> right. Like disappointment and hurting and like drama big drama this is like turkish way of feeling the feelings right right yeah so yeah so all and that sounds like what you described your parents as it's like we don't feel we don't feel and then when we feel it's drama and crazy and not safe to you yeah right so even though you have this beautiful understanding and i i know love but i would also say attachment to your parents that says they did the best they could as a way to shut yourself up. Mm -hmm. I want to transcend that with you and say, just tell me about the anger you feel. We, we under, we're going to put a pin in that they did the best they could. That's true. But okay. what hasn't come to light is the anger. So tell me what, even if they did the best they could, what, what you feel when you just, can you have a moment? It's like that sucked when I wasn't allowed to feel that was, that pisses me off that my parents never saw that. I feel so angry that my dad never, do you get what I mean? You're not going to, you don't even have to tell them, you know, you're telling us, right. Yeah. And yourself really <laughs> tell me, tell me something that if it was safe to say, and your parents weren't going to abandon you or go crazy, what was something that you're angry about from your past? there's so much anger <laughs> let's let that out let's let, tell me tell me tell me a thing that makes you angry about them or about your childhood um that, that it was that they get so so um offended easily like like so offended and so sad that I couldn't express anything. And um, it just get it gets blurry. Something is blocking me to, to feel that and to. Your understanding of them and your fear of conflict yeah. What's the conflict look like to you? Like I can see they're over you, right? Their energy's over you, right? Yes, exactly. What's, what's the conflict that you're scared you would feel if you felt your feelings fully? Like, 
they get so um mad and upset and disappointed that I will no longer have the connection yes. to them. Okay. Let's say this for a second. My parents are allowed to get mad and angry and upset. Can you say that out loud? Yeah, my parents and my siblings are allowed to get mad at me. Yes. So now what we're doing is we're going, okay, that could happen. We're still going forward, right? Do you realize you're just carrying their, you're enabling and carrying their emotions. This is kind of what this week is about, of not carrying over the line, right? Like carrying yeah, more it's like, blame than yours. Oh, um, What's that? Yes. It's like, it's my fault. Yeah. So even if, even if they get angry, even if they're mad, which by the way, they're not watching the call, I'm assuming, right? No. <laughs> right? So isn't it funny? It's not even really them. It's you, you here. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, you here with an avatar of them, an invisible them will get angry in your body, right? Because we're not going to them and saying this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's the anger that's inside, the control that's inside, the parents that are inside. So we're going to say the ones that are inside are the ones that we can see right here while they're not physically in the room are allowed to get so mad because they're not actual danger. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to see how much power you have. They're allowed to get so mad. They're allowed to be so angry at you. They're allowed to be so dismissive of you, whatever. Can you say that? Let's have some of that. Cause we're not talking about those ones. We're talking about these ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like they're allowed to get mad. They are. That makes me feel like shrinking. <laughs> okay. Let's that's still that's still a step forward. We'll take yeah. it. They're allowed to get mad. What else? What do you what comes up next? If you say they're allowed to get mad, then they'll get what? Me mad, actually. What's that? It makes me mad, actually. Oh, it frees the repressed anger? Yeah. Good. Okay. Let's let them both come up. Their anger and your anger are both coming to the surface here. Yeah. It's like, come on, just, just don't be the, the little child. Like I, I just want to tell them, don't, you don't be the little child. I'm the small one. And it's not, it's, it's like, do we really have to, to um, discuss about love? discuss about trust, discuss about unconditional connection and love. Is it really like questioning? Do you really question that? That makes me angry. Yes. That, that they don't trust my essence that, you know, that, that they don't see the, the, the like my heart. Yes. And like no matter if I don't talk to them, if I'm just quiet, if I'm, if I have a quiet moment, or if I just don't want to do things they want from me, that doesn't make me like bad. Yes. You know? Yes. And like loving, it's like, I have to prove my love the whole time. Yes. But what I'm experiencing with my daughter, I, I'm just so pleasing her because i want to prove her i love yeah. you and I get this feeling but i don't because it's not love it's attachment like you said you know yes would you say this out loud i want you to be able to hear this and vocalize it i was very controlled as a child yeah i was very controlled as a child i want you to just hear that for a second because we have such a, they did the best they could that you don't even know you were kind of. And your awareness is too high to keep that buried. You were very controlled as a child. Like I want you to be seen. You were controlled. I'm not trying to make them bad guys, but I'm saying what is. 
you were you were controlled, you were repressed, you were manipulated, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like I just we're just creating space for you to see that. And it's okay to have a little distance even so to see this for a minute. What do you feel when you say that? Like when you really honor and say, I was controlled as a child, what do you feel? Um, <laughs> anger, but mm, not a controlling anger. It's like a, it's like a healthy anger, like, like a protecting anger. Mm, good. Feel that for a minute. Like a little That's... feeling of a of pride and and you know just just my own space kind of. Good. Good. And I just realized <laughs> um, no, I just want to stay in that feeling. <laughs> mm. I just want to run away. <laughs> you what? I just want to run away from that feeling and just talk about something else, but no, and but you stayed. That's surrender. Mm -hmm. Staying in that feeling is a way to surrender, right? You're feeling something. It's doing work on you right now. I can see how glued they are, right? And we're going to, this is what, this year is about this for you. Yeah. Yeah. Take a deep breath in. Tell me just what you're feeling the second. I feel a little bit bigger. <laughs> Good. Like, like um like taking more space. Isn't that like funny? That. You're not in any different physical space. <laughs> yet you feel some kind of boundary or space that's being made. Yes, that's what I'm feeling. Beautiful. What a gift you're being for your daughter right now. She's going to be so empowered. Yeah. And this thing you're going through right now is just the beginning. You're going to create a bigger space for your inner child and her inner child to be seen at the same time or your parents' inner children. It's not one or the other anymore. You're mm -hmm. able to say they did the very best they could, and I was totally controlled. They did the very best they could, and I was totally unseen. Both are true. Both are true, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You want to say a couple of those? You can even say they feel very, you know, they did the best they could, but I, my parents are so loving, they die for me, and I feel. Let's do, let's cre create some, <laughs> what they say, and this, not one negates the other um they were so much fun but i was so bored with them perfect if this makes sense but that was how i felt beautiful they were so um sacrificing but demanding. Mm. And they were so tolerant, so open, and, and shutting down at the same time. And I felt And I felt confused and scared and guilty and angry, just angry. So your new exercise is you cannot say something about one and without saying also the other two. 
and you can do this with everything you sell them. So, cause if you were just like, my parents were so, and were so, and then you kept saying my parents were so, I noticed you left, right? So if you say they were so, and I was so, they were so, and I was so controlled, they were so this, then you're gonna bring that to your daughter. Yeah. My daughter, my daughter needs me and I feel unseen. My, yeah. I, right, they both exist. You'll still make actions that honor your daughter, it's your child but at least we're, we're seeing what you feel. Yeah, both can be there. Yes. And notice the difference between a feeling and an action. Like rebelling is a, is a response to a feeling that's unseen. Okay. So I feel like rebelling is one level, but deeper, I feel like rebelling from this feeling, right? So, so let's pretend your daughter... What's a way your daughter needs your attention? She wants to play. She wants to yeah, constantly <laughs> like play. Yeah. Mommy, mommy, play with me. <laughs> okay, so she wants to play. By the way, mm -hmm. this is a really helpful thing. I I read a book. I haven't finished it, but it's in my Audible, so I didn't read it. Also, but it's called Playful Parenting, mm -hmm. and it helped me so much because I learned something so big about it. They don't just want to play because they like playing. They're they actually they're playing Sorry. to express emotions, right? So like, this is, this is them actually saying their emotions. This was so big for me because it gave me a why to playing, right? So this is, let me give you an actual example. I was listening to this book about playful parenting by the psychologist that Mary just shared the link there. And the psychologist is talking about all these purposes to playing, kids are expressing their emotions, whatever, right? So uh, one day I went to pick Vivi up from a friend's house and I said, let's go, let's get in the car. And she, she didn't want to. And then she was r riding an invisible horse. She called Mina. And I said, does Mina want to go get food? And she said, yes. And then all of a sudden Mina got in the car, her invisible horse. And then we're driving. And I said, I said, what's, how's Mina doing? And she goes, this is what she said. She goes, sometimes Mina gets scared when people come up to her too fast. Like, and I think she was talking about when people recognize me and her and like are in her face because that had happened earlier. And so I was like, really? She goes, yeah, because Mina doesn't know these people and they just kind of come up and say hi, Mina to wow. her and it scares her. And she's like expressing what she's going through through wow. the playing and they can do that with dolls weirdly this doll bizarrely doesn't like to eat this same food and weirdly this doll here is mad when people whatever don't honor her feelings and all of a sudden i got so excited about playing with vivi because it wasn't just i'm being obligated to do this thing she's talking her feelings through barbie dolls through her invisible horse through invisible characters and I'm like, now all of a sudden I have a why. I love working through something once I understand the why. This right? is just, this is insane. And so, because my daughter, she wants to play a lot angry games. Like she plays the angry one. How this interesting. Is so, so insane. Be isn't and the that interesting? played rebel and, and, and the thief and, and exciting things and, and angry. Like mommy, um either I have to be the angry one and she's you know telling me something and I get angry or she has to be the, the angry one and that's just insane like it matches so much to my inner <laughs> she's world. literally trying to play the expression of the emotions you're not willing to feel insane yeah like do you see that you're burying anger so she's like well we'll bring it up over here this this <laughs> this one's angry this one's, you know, crazy. This one, both of their parents grew up in Turkey and they, she didn't get to like, she was almost just describing you and what's buried. So now this is so important because you get a really good reason to play with her. Like you're getting information out of this. See, I used to think that too. Like when Vivi wanted to play, I'd be like, well, I'm going to stop everything and just hold a Barbie doll and say a bunch of things. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh, you're communicating with me the very best you can. And a kid doesn't nearly oh, this bold. This is just insane. I love that. Right? Yes. Yeah. And so that's really a big deal to go, oh, she's trying to do like she literally wants 
to tell daddy her feelings, which is my favorite thing, but <laughs> the best way a five-year-old can, right? So she, I'm suddenly hearing everything she feels through her invisible horse, right? <laughs> Her invisible horse weirdly wants a vegan cheese pizza. Her invisible okay. horse wants to stay at this house tonight. Her invisible horse wants to weirdly watch Willy Wonka. Like, huh. All right. So it's very easy for me to honestly get what I need from her too. If I offer the invisible horse to do it, would Mina like to get in her car? Would Mina like to get dressed for school? Would Mina like to, it's everything's easy all of a sudden. Right. Uh, all. That's insane. Yeah. So, so if you understand that, God, she's trying to communicate to you. She feels anger. Mm -hmm. And she's allowed to. So she's trying to heal you also without knowing it. Yeah. Yeah. She's my biggest teacher. She's like, yeah. Yeah. And, sh and you're doing great now. Now tell me what you feel. I feel calm. Beautiful. For just give me, if you don't mind, like a two minute Calego. Do you know how to Calego? Yeah. <laughs> I want you to just like, if we were to say like, picture this call we're doing was a year ago. Here, I'll jumpstart you for a second. Like if this call we're doing was a year ago. And I said, do you remember a year ago when you started the process of opening and feeling what you were feeling while also being with other people? that you started the process of being fine with the emptiness and also started the process of honoring what your mom and dad did while also honoring what you felt. I remember this year just gradually getting better and better as your old story died out and you went to this higher frequency of love and joy and power, right? Because you were in this new world. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. I remember that one year ago when we had the call and I felt so in prison. And, but I felt also that my inner child wanting to come out and to play actually. And I remember after our call, I went to sleep because it's 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so next morning, um, when my daughter just wake, wakes up, um, I feel all this, these feelings are still coming up and I'm able to, to um, feel them. I'm able to feel the anger. I'm able to feel the, the, the fear and I'm able to hold them and to have space for them and, and just to, to disconnect them from my daughter that that's not her and she's just mirroring me these feelings and and I feel like strong well I felt strong like no I have power I feel like I have power now to um to feel to feel just and to to um to know that I own my life and my feelings and I have the strength to just honor myself and just be and just be and just flow and relax and just see my daughter and just just not loving her just being love and feeling her being love and me being love and and it's okay if we fight and it's okay if I get mad and she gets mad and because we are there's this unconditional bond between us. And I trust myself, I trust her. And I can relax when I just go and have, and be alone with myself and, and actually enjoy maybe this emptiness because it's, it's, it's an opportunity for me to, to express myself and to flow. Wow. <laughs> that was incredible. That was shockingly good. 
you're magical. Your daughter's so lucky and you're so lucky to have her. And this is beautiful. And all that was breaking apart was attachment. And it just broke apart all year. And you just gently allowed it to. You spent more time in the empty space when you had it. Didn't distract. Always honored what both sides felt, you know? Because God yeah. sees all of it, right? And so you'll start to see from a higher frequency of all versus the small that keeps the small self alive. Yeah. And I don't know, I just remember this being a miracle call. And I remember after you did that beautiful Calego, you just opened your heart to receive. Do you remember this? You yeah, said I remember. That this audience just was so touched by this call and your power and your energy and your strength. And I just remember you just opening your heart and this audience just pouring their love at you and you seeing how much your call helped them. Do you remember that? I remember. <laughs> yes, I remember. Uh, yeah. All right, you ready, you ready to do it? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please share in the comments something you got out of this call or how amazing Bahar is and what an amazing person she is. Please share so she can receive from you outside of her so that both her inner child and your inner child exist. Feel free to read these out loud, Bahar. Okay. Um, oh my God, this was amazing. Exactly my situation. Wow, you healed me. Oh my God. Your daughter is such a lucky little girl to have a mom. Thank you, Bahar. I'm so grateful for you and your vulnerability. You have helped me so much, really. This call was incredible. Thank you. Um, there's someone from Turkey who <laughs> took this me <laughs> Thank you. I cried so much through this moment. Honesty. I'm like, wow, thank you. Amazing. Thank you for opening up. So helpful. This was incredible, helpful. Thank you, Bahar and Kyle. Yes, thank you, Kyle, so much. I see you free already. You are so powerful and beautiful in your authenticity. Thank you. Thank you. You really delight what I've been feeling. Oh, that was so profound. Incredible, Bahar, so much inside your childhood and relationship with parents is so much like mine. Wonderful, Bahar, you are so, so aware. You're a wonderful mama. Thank you. This has been my question for 20 years. So much so to be afraid of having kids. I didn't want to damage them, but I feel the anger coming out is so healthy. Thank you for having the courage to bring peace in the war and say, oh my God, I'm hugging you. Really resonated with controlled and disappointing mom. I can relate to so much of this. Thank you. Thank you so much. This broke me out of my prison. Oh my God. Thank you for bringing the surrender to my now. <laughs> Thank you. Bravest question ever. My situation too. You are incredible. So touched and amazed with you speaking your truth, feeling your feelings. I'm ready to go play with dolls to help process my emotions. Guilt comes up when I feel not allowed to feel something. There's something no one wants to accept. Yeah. When parents get mad, angry, upset, I fear abandonment. My husband, friends, family are allowed to feel angry, upset. I am angry that they can't, don't trust what is happening, isn't happening to them. This is happening with me. I love that so much. Thank you, Bahar and Kyle. This call touched my heart deeply. Thank you, Bahar, for sharing your beautiful truth with us. Thank you so much for be me. I also have immigrant parents we deal with this issue of narcissist parents who tried so hard and sacrificed themselves and also yeah this is my core wound i am ready to be free oh my god thank you bar for expressing what i'm feeling and i don't have kids so much came up for me wow should i keep reading um 
I have never <coughs> I have never related to a call as much as this. I am in the same situation. Oh wow. Hi. Hi. That was so you're so special. Yeah, that was a very good one because that had really good tangible like we all know how we can lose ourselves when someone else is in the room. And this helps us break down not only why that is, but how to heal that. Um, right. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, you're a beautiful human being. That was so special. Thank you so much. I mean, you, thank you so much. Just thank all of you. Hell yeah. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Feel good i feel loved i feel seen i feel excited i feel calm I feel... <laughs> and i just want to point out you were able to feel seen and love and calm with another person yeah. so sometimes it's the type of person too like maybe maybe also you've drawn people into your life that also don't hear you so you can just be a space for them because that's home to you but maybe you're going to challenge yourself to only let people in your life that I mean, even your daughter hears you. She's bringing up dolls playing anger, you know, like, and so like you're going to, I just want to point out you're capable of having people in your life and hearing your inner child because you just did it. It's just make sure you bring people in your life that hear your inner child. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you'll be a master at their inner child. They'll, any person in your life will feel the most seen there ever is. Yeah, that's true. Right? But but it'll be they'll feel even more seen when you have the foundation of your inner child also. That's true. Right? Thank you so much, Kyle. <sighs> Thank you. Love you so much. Love you too, all of you. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna give you a huge round of applause and just celebrate you and a huge hug, and then we'll let you go. Okay, my dear. Thank you so much. Give her a round of applause, everybody. Give her love and joy. Thank you for thank being with. Thank you, my dear. Have a great night. Have a good sleep tonight, okay? Yeah, I will. Thank you so much. Thank Have a you. good day. All right, you bye. too. See you soon. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. How crazy was that? As you finish that episode, ask yourself what's something you will change because of what you just saw. Is there a new exercise for you? Is there something you can let go of? Can you have new compassion for yourself and your family at the same time? There's so many different things here. I hope you got something out of it. And again, if you wanna join us on Hot Seat or all of our other segments or all of our past events or all of our future events, right now, you can get a year of the Absolutely Everything Pass for $2.99 for an entire year. That's like a almost $500 discount. And I promise you, you'll change your life and you'll probably be in a hot seat yourself. And let's see what happens with that. Join us on the Absolutely Everything Pass. I hope you enjoyed this.